Are you recording this? Okay, Colonel uh, Matrix. Let's see. Let's let's discuss this so we can have a better understanding. Because if you if we don't, this is the, really the core fundamental of investment uh, with margin. If we don't understand this, it's gonna it's it's really what separate you how to be rich and you rich sooner and rich later. That's it. You're gonna get rich, but it's gonna be sooner or later. Yeah. No, I agree. So I agree. Yeah. Think of like unconventional wealth. He's he's borrowing a lot of money. And, and a lot of people think that his system is kind of insane. And, uh, and, but mainly because we don't understand it. So I'm going to see if I can break it down. If I can explain to you, then I have truly mastered, or at least, or at least I BS really well. So one or the other. <laughs> All right. All right. So imagine I have zero dollar right now, zero dollar. Obviously, then you get no margin. If you have zero dollar, you got no margin. All right. They won't give it. They won't give you money if you have margin. So, but but let's say you your account value is at fifty uh, at fifty thousand dollar, and you bought nothing but Tesla. You have Tesla fifty thousand dollar, bam, uh, and and now you're able to get some margin at fifty thousand dollar. They're gonna give you, um, you know, let's say. Twenty thousand uh, dollar uh, Let's say they give you a hundred thousand dollar margin. You have fifty thousand dollars worth of Tesla inside your portfolio. That's all you own. Now they're going to give you essentially two to one, a hundred thousand dollar. All right. Yep. And and you at this point you have no dividends, zero dividends. So if you go and buy more Tesla, let's say you you buy. Ten thousand dollar more of Tesla. Now you have sixty thousand dollars worth of Tesla. Well, guess what? Now you owe you have a margin interest, you know, of ten thousand dollars, thirteen percent. You know, so you you now you have to pay one hundred thirty dollars every month. Well, where that money come from? Well, you have to put that money in. You have to pay it from your checking account somewhere, because remember Tesla. You even though you have fifty thousand. You just spent ten thousand dollars from the hundred thousand dollar margin uh, to own it. Now you have sixty thousand dollars of Tesla, but however, uh, you're you're negative ten thousand in hole in in the hole. Yep. So you have to pay interest in that, and so whenever that's due, let's say it's at the end of the month, it's due at the end of the month. You have to pay one hundred fifty dollar. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes. But that makes but your sense. account is your account is now sixty thousand dollar. Uh, you, you have sixty thousand dollars portfolio. If you're unable to sell, um, if you're unable to sell uh, Tesla, uh, or unable to get one hundred fifty dollars for whatever reason, they're not going to margin call you. They're just going to say pay the one hundred fifty dollar. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, but if if you even if you on that day, you're supposed to sell the $150 of, of Tesla, uh, uh, pay $150 of the dividends, not dividends, the interest, the margin interest, and you don't have $150 to pay it, okay, and you decide to sell all uh, all 10,000 share that you just bought. Uh, you know what? I don't, want, I don't want to do this margin thing. I'm going to sell my 10,000 share, bring it back, and you didn't sell a loss, so you sell a victory. You gain some money out of that. Because you bought it low, you sell higher, you gain some money out of that. And guess what? You still have to pay $150 because you borrow that money for that whole month. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, that I mean that makes sense. But however, because you sell it at a gain, let's say you pay you you pay two hundred for it, now you sell it two fifty. Guess what? That's a gain. That gain can also pay your 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 interest. So that's that's the simplest form. Uh, at the simplest form, with no n no interest and with no um what uh, a, a scenario when there's no dividends involved. That, that, does that make sense a little bit? And so a lot of people prior to these high yield dividends, what what people are doing, they buy margins to buy Tesla at at one eighty or one fifty, and then they're like, you know what, I'm going to buy Tesla at one fifty, and if Tesla go up to 250 they just made a hundred dollars a share and it's not yep. even their money to start off with you see what i'm talking about yeah 
That's what a lot of people were doing. So they, they say, oh, I got $100,000. Okay, well, I'll spend half of that money. They take another 50, so they have fifty thousand dollars in their account already. They have a hundred thousand dollars of margin. They're gonna spend fifty thousand dollars worth to buy Tesla stock at two hundred dollars, and then they're gonna they're gonna sell it when it go up to two fifty. And there you go. There's the money. There's 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 the profit. They just made fifty. You know, let's say they made five thousand dollars. They made five thousand dollar profit, and it's not. And they just borrow their money. Where they lose the money is when Tesla stock did not go up to 250. <laughs> yeah. And matter of fact, the opposite happened. And 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 uh, now they're losing money. All right. That's a, that's a worst case scenario. Okay, so the next question we want to talk about is the dividends. The, what happens when you have a dividends payout? Yeah, does it automatically get, um, I guess it depends by broker too. I mean, does it automatically just go towards the margin or do you, can you allocate a certain percentage towards the margin? Yeah, they just pay. All right, so when you get a dividend payout, okay, so... You have fifty thousand dollar of Tesla, I mean uh, Tesla, and now you take ten thousand dollar from this one hundred thousand dollar. Instead of buying Tesla, you're gonna buy. You're gonna go buy Tesla. You're gonna take ten thousand dollar and buy Tesla, and that gets you a thousand shares, ten dollars, uh, you know, stock, and you get a thousand here, and they give you essentially five hundred dollar uh, of interest, okay, uh, of dividends. So you get five hundred dollars of dividend. Uh, let me give. So the scenario is simple: fifty uh, fifty thousand uh, dollar worth of Tesla. They're gonna give you a hundred thousand dollar margin because you own Tesla, and then uh, out of the out of the hundred thousand dollar, you're gonna take ten ten thousand dollar or ten percent of a hundred thousand, and you're gonna take that money to buy instead of buying Tesla, you're gonna buy Tesla now Tesla. Right? Yep. So you have ten thousand dollars worth of Tesla, which is about a thousand share, right? Yep. You you got a thousand share, and and that thousand share gave you essentially five hundred dollars a month, All right? Well, when you borrow ten thousand dollar from them, uh, from the margin, it costs you about one hundred and fifty dollars again, all right? So now the difference is is three fifty, all right? So what happened at the end of the month when you get paid by dividends? I don't know when the margin is due, but let's say they do only five days apart. So Tesla get paid. Well, then guess what? When you get paid, you have $150 credit in your account. And then that will pay the margin. Make sense? Yeah. So that so that's pay. All right. So this is where this is where a lot of people uh, this is where a lot of people uh, make a lot of money. Uh, so they essentially say, okay, that's $10,000. I'm going to borrow $50,000 uh, from it, and therefore I'm going to get 5,000 uh, share of Tesla, uh, 5,000 share of Tesla, and, and out of 5,000 share of Tesla, I um, I'm gonna get uh, roughly what is that uh, five thousand share of Tesla somewhere around three thousand dollars a month that, because that's what I got all right yeah. so you you get three thousand dollars a month this is where you kind of like making money you get you get fifty thousand dollar of margin and your payment now is roughly about five hundred dollars a month and then but yet you have Three thousand dollars worth of dividend coming in. If you minus the five hundred, you're getting two fifty. Yeah, twenty five hundred. Yep. Yeah. For whatever reason, you're not happy with this this Tesla. You're not happy with the margin, and you don't like the idea. You owe fifty thousand dollar. Well, then you sell all your 
you sell all your Tesla, guess what? That's the 50, it go away. Yeah, that makes sense. As long as you're selling it at a profit. Yeah, if you sell a profit. In the Tesla case, it's not, it's go, it went down. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that, I mean, that makes sense. I mean. I think, uh, yeah, I always just, I know it's, yeah, I always figured, I, I always look, I mean, I always, it, I mean, it is a loan per se. It's just a matter of, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of how much margin you get, the margin maintenance, which I'm starting to understand. If it's like a hundred percent margin maintenance, then you can't borrow anything against that particular stock or ETF. Um, if it's like 25% margin maintenance, then you can borrow, what, 75% of the value of that ETF? Or am I looking, thinking of it the wrong way? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just know if it's 100% margin maintenance, then you can't borrow anything against that ETF. And Because uh, I think Tesla is like, what, 50% margin? Uh, uh, Tesla is, I forgot. I think it is 50% in Charles Schwab. Yeah. Yeah, is that bad? No, I mean, it's better than 100% because if you have 100% margin maintenance, you, you can't, can't borrow. borrow. You can't borrow any money based, like, so if you only have one stock slash, if you only have one position mm -hmm. um, and it's 100% margin, then you can you basically have no margin to use because it's 100% margin maintenance. If it's 50% margin maintenance, then you've got 50% of the value of that of whatever you have. So if you've got, you know, a $50,000, you, your Tesla position is worth $50,000, and it's your only position, and it's 50% margin maintenance, then I believe you have um, $25,000 worth of margin. Yeah, I believe. If I'm understanding it correctly, I, I might not be because math is not my strong suit. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm t the The bottom line is the bottom line. What I'm trying to explain is that that money, that negative fifty thousand dollars in the scenario we put, is still it's sitting in your portfolio. So as long as when you turn around and sell that fund. Uh, you sell the fund and when it's more uh, than it, then, then you're going to get, not only you get the capital appreciation, uh, but you, you'll also pay off your margin. Right now is a bad time for me to sell. To sell. So that negative $46,000 just sitting there. And it has to sit there because I'm $20,000 in a hole. That means my, my, my stock has depreciated the value of 20%, uh, $20,000. Now, once Tesla price go back up, let's say Tesla price go up to you know thirteen dollars, where my average is, at even at, at a thousand loss, at a thousand loss, I don't mind selling my my margin at at you know if if the 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 value is only you know thousand couple thousand dollar, I don't mind that thousand loss is not a problem, but I got rid of my margin. Makes sense? Yeah, I mean you can only pay your margin up either by a using your monthly dividends pay it off yeah b sell off what you sell off positions to pay it off or c deposit money directly into your account and pay it off that way yeah but it, it's not like a loan a loan you're taking loans it it's uh it you take a loan somewhere it's not like this it there's an asset sitting somewhere you know that you 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 t you're doing a collateral. You know when you take that loan, you buy something. Um, it's well, a collateral it, it, loan, huh? It's a collateral loan, and the margin is based off the amount of the va yeah. based off the value of your portfolio. Yeah, I, I'm trying to explain it. I mean, it's like essentially like. Um, I mean, it's still a loan. Regardless, yeah, it is. It a is loan. a loan, but it's it's not it's not your traditional loan kind of sense. You know. Yeah, and and I I just don't know how to explain it uh, because all I can all I explain is that when when people see I'm I'm negative fifty thousand dollar, they they freak out. Man, if they freak out at fifty thousand dollar, I should tell them how much I owe in rental property. 
the fact that you're still paying from 2019 your taxes, yeah, I can only imagine. In order to buy houses, you have to take loan to buy houses. Oh, yeah. You're not buying houses cash. You're taking loan. That's what essentially what margin is. So I take loan, but my the loan to buy some of these houses is like $500,000. Oh, $300, easily. $300,000. Easily. Oh, man. If I tell you at my peak, peak day, you know what my loan is, man? Probably a, a million and a yeah. half, a couple million. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. you have a couple houses and given the housing property, I mean, Grant, I mean, you know, you and I are from the same state, so we know what property values are like. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's it's a lot of, yeah, I, I, I owe like, you know, two, $3 million. Yeah, which is why you keep paying all the taxes. Yeah. That's what the, the, I'd say. I, I've been paying taxes since 2018, 2019. If I sell one on a home, I pay tax forever. Yeah. And the good thing about home is they appreciate in value really high. So when I sell it, mm-hmm. so I have like $300 worth of, lo- of loan that I need to pay, but my house value is like over like $5 million or something like that, you know? Yeah. As long as I just keep selling, as long as I sell it and get rid of it, you know? Right, right. But it's rare to find a house that you pay $300,000 and then five years later or 10 years later become a hundred thousand dollar it's rare you know it's like it's it's not like a stock yeah exactly exactly you, you really have to screw this up you really really have to screw up <laughs> buying a house at three hundred thousand dollar and then 10 years later that house depreciate value you bought yeah. you bought a home in a really bad 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 neighborhood yeah and uh, and depending on where it is i mean most people are going to actually do improvements to the house, so it's going to increase the value. And if you do, no, if you buy a house at three hundred fifty and do nothing, and then the value goes down, yeah, you definitely screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't. It doesn't take a lot. Of, it doesn't take huge investments to actually raise the property value of a house. Uh huh. It little things can make a huge difference. Yeah. And sometimes it's just putting a, a wall, a drywall, in the garage, and that went up to like twenty thousand. Like, what the heck are you? Cost me a thousand dollars to put a drywall, and that thing went up to twenty thousand. Yeah, you clean up the front yard, and all of a sudden it looks super nice, and you, that raises the property value. You throw, you know, a couple grand and throw a new coat of paint all, all over the house and make it look fresh. Huge value change. Yeah. So it's similar to to this. I am borrowing money, but the only thing different is that the stock do decrease in value, and that's that's like the problem. And yeah, and so yeah, that's really that's really the only you know conflict you know because the stock do decrease in value. Yeah, I mean we know it's going to go up and down depending on how much margin you have and how many dividends you have. Yeah, it can be it can be an issue, but you know the fact that you're diversifying enough, you're like okay, well, I got money coming in each week you know each month and can pay it off that way plus you've got supplemental income to pay it off then it's 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 manageable you know but yeah i mean if you don't have if you don't own houses you know and you see you know fifty thousand dollar debt compared to what you owe with your houses you're like whatever you know fifty thousand is is a joke you know but if most people if they don't have a high enough income either they're going to be like what the hell am i doing you know Yeah, and, and 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 it's it's tough if, if you if you never have well, well they're like well why why would you want to own a million dollars worth of, well if you want to make you want to make money in rental property you're gonna to have to own homes and home yeah. homes are not fifty thousand dollar <laughs> no exactly you know so um, yeah it's a little bit different mindset you know a little different mindset. It's 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 tough. I don't know how to explain it, you know, to some some of these people. They they're talking about stuff like this, but like, how do you explain that? Yeah, it's tough. You know, sometimes it's you got to take multiple approaches with people. You know, um, but I'm glad you actually approach these these subjects. You know, I I give you a lot of credit, man. You ask a lot of questions and try and go over things and reiterate things, mm-hmm. and. I, you, we, we need it. I mean, you know, for the people like Kenny and B and 
Claude, you know, and, and Sam, you know, all these guys and Andrew, they, they all know what the hell they're doing. They've been in it a long time. But for a lot of us, you know, we need to hear it repeatedly, 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 because eventually it's going to click, you know, and it it reassures people that they're making the right decisions in what they're doing and it helps them better understand what's going on. And, you know, people don't freak out. Like I was listening to a conversation earlier um, with... Uh, with the other Kenny, not not day trader Kenny, but the other Kenny and uh, Ant, and the other Ken, Kenny, you know, who's got the crush on Joanna, that Kenny, you know, he's like buying stuff and selling stuff, and Ant's like, why, why do you? Because like, you know, he, I don't think Kenny really has a grasp of what's going on. He does and he doesn't. I think he just panics or he doesn't fully understand. And you know, Ant's trying to explain to him. It's like, you know, it, the market's going to go up and down. You know, you're you're making losses doing these things and all the decisions and. I'm just like, Jesus, you know, I'm like, you would think after enough time, you know, he would, he'd realize it's like, just step back, slow down, you'll be okay, you know, just market's going to do what it's going to do, just hold tight, you know, and, and dollar cost average down. I mean, he knows to do that, but he still like panics and kind of sells out of things. And, you know, you keep reiterating a lot of things and I, and I, and it makes me feel better because I'm like, okay, I'm new to this, but. I'm listening to you ask these questions all the time, go over in your videos, and um, reminding people to have a plan, stick with it. Yeah, the only thing, it. the only thing that I I keep forgetting, you know, like I, I'm glad you're aware of that. Uh, I ask a lot of questions because for the purpose of YouTubing, uh, doesn't mean I'm gonna do it. You know, like what, what, like I talk about crypto all the time, but I haven't bought a single crypto. And and then and then when somebody said, oh, so honestly, we no, I'm not buying crypto, right? And not because I don't like crypto or anything like that, because it's not in my plan. I am very plan focused, you know. Like if it's not in the plan, uh, I'm not doing it. So then you can then you have to ask yourself, why do you plan if you if you just keep going override things? Why why did you spend all the time planning? In my case, why did I go to all the school to learn how to be a planner, and I don't plan? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. I just spent I just spent twenty years in the military, you know, many many years of schooling and planning and training, and and then just to find out when I finally get a chance to plan, I don't plan. I just do stuff, you know, like <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna it's gonna be deliberate. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at cause and effect. I'm gonna look at all the the critical vulnerability and all these things, all these catchphrases out there that you, you learn in school, uh, you know, and I'm going to apply it. Is it, is it. is it a good plan? Is it a bad plan? I don't know. We don't know until we actually apply it, until we actually test up. Now, we learn a lot in planning when we actually do assessment. And uh, when we, when you know, after we we take a look at it, and we say, okay, what does it look like, you know, six months from now? And then you do assessment of it, and you're like, man, that didn't work out too well, you know. Yeah, and, I remember you mentioning that the other night. I'm sorry. I said I remember you mentioning that the other night. Yeah, you, you, you can plan all you want, but, and, and but if you have you have to you have to do assessment weekly, monthly, uh, and then constantly review and constantly go back to the PowerPoint and 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 ask the tough question. You know what I think it does too, especially if things don't work, is um, especially in your line of work where you're going into different countries, different scenarios all the time. You, you, I mean, obviously you have a playbook of certain things you can, you're going to, if you're going to like Iraq, okay, it's a desert con country. We have to prepare for X, Y, and Z. And that's kind of a given. Yeah. But then if you prepare for it and then something doesn't go according to plan, then you reassess it. And you're like, okay, this didn't work. Um, I, you know what I find something like that does? It gives you new insight in how to look at the planning process. So like you'll, you'll go, like say so you're gonna go to another country and you have to plan for X, Y, Z, but then because of some, what happened in the other country and you missed it, you're gonna think about that going forward and say, okay, does that apply here? And I think it almost like it gives you another angle to approach the situation, I think is what it does. So I think that's what reviewing really helps with. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. If the plan doesn't work, then 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 you it, you have no choice except to rely. That's when training come in. Yeah. Uh, you know. So then then hope that your training compensate for the for you know the 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 failure in the plan, and uh, and so and then and then if training doesn't then then after that it's just mental and moral uh toughness you know and 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 cleverness you know that's that's the individual skill level because you can plan for everything but then there are two that there's, there's always something that you just there's always a variable there's no way you can control it and yeah. then and then that's when your training kick in like okay I know what to do in this situation because I've seen it done it or at least I have I have you know let's say I let's say for example I need to ride uh, I need I need to go from from Bombay to Delhi, New Delhi. You know, like that's over like you know a couple hundred miles. And the only transportation I have is motorcycle. Well, guess what? And then I just jump in a motorcycle to take off, uh, because I'm trained. You know what I mean? And yep. Or I have to swim, you know, three miles to get to this boat. And then then uh, okay, that's when my training come in. You know, stuff like that. And so that's where your training come in. But if, uh, and then and even despite all the training and all the tools, and then yet you still have gaps, and then that's when that's when your club, that's when you, as an individual, your intelligence, come come up with a plan to to come out of the situation. Yeah, and I think that's where the training actually kicks in because I think you're put in enough situations where you're under stress and you may not be familiar with the with with what's going on which sometimes there's no way to plan or even train for that but i think it gives you the mental capacity to just try and step back even under fire to say okay we need to do x y and z it may not be the right plan but it's a plan you know yeah which is better than just sitting there doing nothing and panicking yeah and uh going back to uh you know the margin. It's it's essentially it's a scary it's a scary thing. You're borrowing fifty thousand dollar, and you know you borrow fifty thousand dollar to buy a car, and you're gonna be paying that car for like seven years. You know what I mean? Yep. And or five years, six years, whatever. You you you're gonna be paying for a while. You know, and at, at whatever price is and. And it's scary. That's what most people see when you see fifty thousand dollar. You know, like they see a car payments, right? Sure. But that fifty thousand dollar that you borrow is generating you income. For in my case, it's generating fifty thousand dollars, generating you three thousand dollars a month income. And then if you minus the the interest, you're generating two, you know, two hundred fifty thousand, uh, two hundred fifty, two thousand five hundred because the other five hundred you paying the interest. Yep. Yeah, you're paying the interest, but you haven't tackled the actual margin debt. I paid my car off. Yeah, it's just a different mindset. It's it's it, it really is. It's just a different mindset. I and um, you you borrow money to make the money. Yeah, that I understand. That's that is a difference because the thing is, you know, you know, providing you've planned it right, you you know, that money you're borrowing isn't creating a liability it's just increasing your assets yeah because it's literally especially in an etf it's literally helping you generate more income yep and and the only the worst case scenario is where i'm in where my tesla is drop its value by twenty thousand dollar yeah and it's temporary yeah, but but it's it's temporary in the market because the market is down right now. But if if you know if you talk to me back in January, that was not the case. Right. Yeah. So it's it's here's the question. Here's the question I'm going to ask. Yeah. Do you have a point because you're now in the margin world? Do you have a point where enough is enough? Yeah, for me it's fifty thousand. Okay. I, I'm as I'm I'm, as... I'm at forty six thousand, and uh, right now, so I'm uh, I'm 
different between 4,000. Okay, so where does 50,000 overall in the total? Uh, they gave me, uh, I don't know what, I don't know what the total amount is because I, I owe 46,000. If once you go to zero, then you know the total amount. There's no way to know the total amount because that number fluctuate like a, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, like a musical instrument, you know? So, uh, but essentially I have 30,000 available left. So 30,000 plus 46,000, it's roughly, well, it's not 30,000 exactly. It's like 38 or something, 36 or something like that. I forgot what the exact amount is. So if you, let's, let's just round 40 to 40. Uh, we'll just round it off even number. So I got about 80,000 total. But like I said, it, it, there's no way to know what the total, my assumption the total is actually 100,000. Um, and because every time you borrow the money, that, that margin number come down even faster. It's, it's lower. So the, the availability is smaller. So in other words, it's not one for one. If I spend $10,000 uh, on Tesla, you think it would be $10,000 taken away from availability. No, my availability dropped by 30,000, 30, you know, something like that. Because they, they, they kind of calculate the risk assessment going into that. Uh, so right now at $46,000, uh, I still have over 30 something thousand dollars available. So essentially about, I spend roughly 60% of my total availability. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah. So, so where I draw the line right now, that's a very good question. Where I draw the line right now is fifty thousand uh, dollar. I'm not gonna go below below that. I mean, that's gotta be that's that's a number I gotta stand. So here's the thing: depend what I buy. So if I take that, if I, I, I got five. You know, let's say I have availability of five thousand left. If I take that five thousand and buy um, IWMY, IWMY is one percent maintenance. So I get no additional margin. But if I take that money and buy Tesla again, uh, guess what? My my availability, my availability just went up even more. Make, make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As long as you... Why am I explaining this to you? you have, you're, like, you're supposed to be teaching me. As long as you have, <laughs> like I said, your uncle point, Yeah. you know, as long as you've already done your scan and realize if... You know, you know, you you're you're a military planner, mm -hmm. so you know, you prep during quiet times for the noise that could come. You know, yeah. And uh, as long as you know, and long as you have assessed, if it gets to that situation, what will I ditch? What's my first candidate to ditch? Yeah, to to, to bring me out that out that situation. You know, as long as you got that figured out or have an idea, that's all that matters. All right. Yeah. Well, the ditch part, I haven't figured that out yet. So uh, to be fair, because that means I have to sell something, and I don't want right. to sell. I don't want to sell anything. <laughs> so what I what I'll do is that since I don't want to sell anything, I rather I rather put money into it. I rather just take put money in. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's a plan. That's that's yeah. that's an alternative plan. You know. So, and that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. And. And so what I'm going to do is, as long as I keep under fifty thousand, I'm probably going to hold fifty thousand for a while, because that fifty thousand yeah. is generating me a thousand dollars a month. Well, eventually, what's going to happen is that I'm going to make five thousand a month, six thousand a month, seven thousand a month, eight thousand a month. And eventually, I reach ten thousand dollar, and so that's where I'm at right now at five thousand dollars a month. So if I get ten thousand dollar, I would just, I would just uh, essentially take five thousand of, of which paid. Pay the margin, another five thousand, and continue on investing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how close I am uh, to that? Because the number is so large now, the quantity, the number. This is this is where it's crazy. I can't do this in real estate. A lot of people. This is one of the things I'm just so in love with with investment right now, because you you cannot do this math in real estate. Not not no. There's no way. All right. So. I get five thousand dollars a month right now on my way to six thousand. So the exact number is five thousand five hundred. So I'm five hundred away to get six thousand a month. I'm contributing my own money, all right, regardless what the situation, a thousand five hundred, regardless. All right. So I, I put a thousand five hundred every month into my portfolio. So technically, in my portfolio account, I get um, 
6,000 uh, 6, or 7,000. So 5,500 plus 1,500. So it's $7,000 going into the portfolio. All right. So 7,000. If if I take this fifteen thousand dollar that I got right now and I buy another fund that gave me a thousand dollars a month, guess what? That seven thousand now just went up to eight thousand dollar. This is all before February. I mean, it all matter in the next two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the month of February, I will get eight thousand uh, dollars right off the bat, as long as I buy something before the February X date. Otherwise, got to wait until uh, until March to make. To get that eight thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars. So I get eight thousand dollars. So now for March payment. So all the February, I'm gonna get all the money, eight thousand dollars. I can do one of two things: use that and pay the margin, which you know dropped from fifty, you know, forty-six thousand to whatever. Or I can just take that money and buy some more fun to generate, you know, eight thousand. Uh, you know, essentially, a, just think about it. these fun costs. You know. 18 to 20 dollar 18 dollar let's say 19 dollar for IWMY and they pay a dollar dividends so if I spend 19 18 19 thousand dollars I'm gonna get another thousand dollar a thousand share or a thousand dollar make sense yeah. and so I'm already halfway there so if I if I take all that money and just buy another IWMY I get uh, almost five hundred thousand dollars if I take and then the next month I take another all that money in April now, I take all that money and buy another IWMY. Guess what? I get another 500. So now I got a thousand. So going into May, it's no longer 8,000. It's going to be $9,000 a month. You see what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. But that's not going to be possible if I didn't have this margin <laughs> that I'm sitting at 50,000 just sitting here. Now, at some point, at some point, everything is good. The market's good. Uh, Tesla's Tesla is hovering at three hundred dollars. You know, four hundred going to four hundred. Tesla is sitting around fourteen dollars, fifteen dollars. You know, everybody's happy as a clam. Everybody's green across the board. Well, then I potentially may just sell. You know, forty six thousand dollars worth of Tesla and then reset my margin to zero. Me, yeah. Yeah. Because now I, you know, what I mean, what's your interest rate? Uh, it's thirteen percent. It's roughly about five hundred dollar. Wow, that's pretty high. Yep. But in return, I get two thousand five hundred, <clears throat> or a thousand, or two thousand, you know, whatever it is. Are you worried about uh, getting a margin call at all? Like how much? No, because can you? I, I will explain it's only 60% of my portfolio, uh, my my maintenance. So I have 30000 available. I, I'm spending 46000 So, come here. do you think it's still a sound strategy to do that, to buy Tesla on margin? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'll tell that to anybody. I'll, uh, yeah. You can't do it because you have to have – the margin is based on your – your your portfolio you, you you if you if you open Charles Schwab account you have zero margin and you have zero dollar in your account if you so in order to get margin you have to have money in the account so let's say you 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 put you bought you put in fifty thousand dollar and nothing but Tesla guess what Tesla give you good margin at thirty percent now you have a hundred thousand dollar if you have a hundred thousand dollar then then spend fifty thousand dollars on Tesla if yeah, dude, fifty thousand dollars on Tesla. Yeah, Tesla is a lot of money. That's like that's like three thousand dollars a month. Yeah, and you use those distributions or the dividends to pay back the margin, right? That's the idea. Well, you don't even have to. You just let it ride. Just... Yeah, just just let it ride and keep it, and then and take that three thousand uh, dollar, and then keep growing it. <laughs> and two thousand reinvested. Two thousand. It's two thousand five hundred. It's not three thousand because you got to pay the five hundred fee. So two thousand right. five hundred, and then. Uh, all right, um, my my guild just said I have an officer meeting, so I gotta I gotta go. So I gotta uh, I'll be right back. I'll, it's only like ten twenty minutes. Uh,